right, so I have one of the hams from the deer and then one half of a loin. I have deboned the ham so that the hip bone is not in there anymore. And this makes it a little bit easier to cook. I can kind of wrap it up best I can. Um, I've also trimmed all the fat and all the stuff I don't want off the ham and also off the, the silver meat off of the loin. So next step is we're gonna, I'm gonna put it in the pan. And put the ham in the pan first. And I'm going to inject the ham with uh, Tony Chastray's injectable butter. My favorite is the Creole butter, but I couldn't find any, so I just had to go with the, just the plain butter. So mainly just the reason for it going in the pan is to catch any of the residual so it doesn't just run out all over the counter. There's, this is this has zero technique. It's just plunge it in and inject it whatever, however much or however little you want to go. As big a piece of meat as this is, um, the season is going to go be very heavy on the outside. So this is all going to be one big piece cooked together. You know, if you were slicing it end of steaks it wouldn't uh you could see go a little bit less on the season but since we're going to slice it all your season is going to be on the outside so it's going to have to be a little heavy and normally one of these bottles does for me about two and a half hams So I'm gonna do this and then I'll flip it over and get the other side and then we'll, see, we'll season it. It also doesn't hurt that while you're doing this, this kind of helps coat and glaze. I put a little bit of a moisture barrier on the outside of the meat too. I'm not going to inject the loin. That'll just be a seasoning blend and a little bit of Dale's steak seasoning, which you'll see in a little bit. gonna run out but the majority will stay in there long enough so I can Now I'm going to season it, and I'll have a list of all this season, what I use in the description. But the first thing is going to be, always start whenever you're seasoning the bigger items, the bigger particles first, and then go work your way to the smaller stuff. So this is Tex Joy Steak Shake. So I'll do it first. Like I said, it's going to be kind of thick, so go heavy with it. Next will just be regular text joy. It's a little bit finer. And then last is Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning. 
which is a real fine. It's got some garlic powder and some other Greek spices in it. Flip it over and coat the inside. Same way. Start with big and go to small. And you don't have to use texture, whatever kind of seasoning you prefer. You know, experiment with it. Don't get stuck. Just do it. Just because I'm doing it, don't do it. You know, do whatever you like, whatever is your favorite. Now I'm gonna let this sit <coughs> for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna roll it. I will roll it back up in kind of the position that it was that it came off the ham, and that's how that's how I'll put it into the um, into the smoker. And my, my temperature probe will go right into the middle of it. Last little bit of the top where I didn't get none. I've also never done it in, the, in a pan. I might just try to leave it in this pan to see how it does. Kind of similar, but instead of doing, instead of injecting them, we're going to put a little bit of Dale's um, steak marinade. It's not a whole lot, just a very, very small amount. So lots of times, what one cap full per per half loin. That's all that I'm going to do. And then just rub it in. I'm not going to go as heavy with the seasoning for it. We'll do a little bit of the steak shake. Get kind of a little on the steak shake. something different because now that's out and then two cavenders on top flip it over and we'll just use the regular texture on the back side. And then the cavenders again. So I'm gonna let this sit now. I'll let both of them sit in the pan. I'm gonna go light my grill, get it going and get it up to temperature. Uh, and then we'll put them in there. And we're gonna be cooking at about 250 degrees on a Rectech smoker. I think I got pecan chips in there. I really don't remember. Um, both of them will have a thermometer, or I'll have a thermometer in one loin and then a thermometer in the in the ham. I will pull both of them out whenever they reach 130, 
three ish, one thirty to one thirty five. Um, the, I know the loins will be done before, but that we'll take them out, wrap up in tin foil, and then we're just then we'll just be waiting on the ham, and then you'll see the finished product once that gets done. So I'm gonna go light the grill. See y'all a little bit. Set the temperature to 250. I'm going to add some chips. I need to get it cooked. Just scoop them up a bit. Don't have one. Are out. I'm just waiting on that preheat. Um, like I said, this is a rec tech. This is the first rec tech I've ever had. And it's so far, whatever temperature you set it on is the temperature it stays at for me. Um, should take about 15 minutes or so for it to preheat. Uh, as soon as it gets done preheating, we're gonna get the ham and the loins and stick them on there and start cooking. Grills at 250. I'm gonna leave the ham in the pan since I don't have any string to, to wrap it up. Probe number A will be the ham. And the loins will just go in there regular. B will be the loins. So, like I said, I'm going to try to get the loins to 130 and the ham to about 135. Um, once they get done, we'll take them off, wrap them in tin foil, and then we'll slice them up, and then y'all can see what that looks like. are at 135 the ham is only 100 or is only 55 so we're probably gonna bump it up a little bit I'm gonna wrap up the loins and let them rest for the rest of the time for a while the rest of it's cooking get a little bit warmer and they'll cook some more while they're in this tin foil which is why I want to take them out at a little bit rare and then they'll stay in here and cook to about medium I'm gonna bump the temperature up to I'll we'll do 300 Longer. It's been cooking for, I don't know, those took about an hour. So this is probably going to take another hour to get the rest of the way. So this has been resting for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and slice it.
I still got about an hour or so left on the ham. So while that's while the rest of that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and eat the loin. All the juices that came out of it, it absorbed it back up in there because there wasn't hardly any juice in the pan. Super tender. See how close. To, so this is the one that had the thermometer in it. And this one did not have a thermometer. It's probably a little bit more done. That's it wasn't, it was kind of off the edge of a pan. So it looks pretty good. Pulled it out at 135, just to recap. 30 day aged white tail dough. Super tender. So if you like yours done a little bit more, you can leave it in a little bit longer. The 135 is getting close to medium rare so i like 130 i like rare just know the fault the longer you cook it see these little shiny juices that are in here the longer you cook it the less juice is going to be in there and also the tougher it's going to be regardless of how long you try to age it Right now the ham is eight o'clock almost. The ham is at 130 degrees. Go ahead and pull it out. We'll let it start resting. How much juice come out of it? Wrap it, into, wrap it up with some tin foil and then let it sit for a while. Here's a result of the 30 day aged white tail doe that I killed on December 22nd, 2023. And we cleaned her, I completely cleaned skinned her on January 22nd, 2024. There's not any loin to go in the shot with this because it all got eaten. But the texture was great. It was, you could cut it with a fork. Um, I cooked both of them to 130 degrees. I know some of it, like this, the, the thick part of the ham stayed at 130, but some of the outside edges cooked a little bit more, but it's fine. If you're, a lot of times you have a crowd of people you're trying to serve, some of them are gonna want it a little more done, some of them want it a little less done. But other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, leave me a comment below. I'll try to answer any questions that anybody has. Give me a like and subscribe and get notified for my, some of my next videos. Thank y'all for watching. See you next time.